I grew up in the same house that my mom grew up in, in a family business. Um, we're now a third generation family business. Um, my grandparents started a turkey farm in the 50s and they grew that for about 20 years and in the 70s when you had suburban sprawl hit Connecticut, um, they had to reinvent themselves because you couldn't have 15,000 turkeys living next to 15,000 people. Not, not so good. So they reinvented themselves and um, turned from farm to food distribution. In the early 90s, food distribution started going down because you had the big guys like Cisco, American Foods, that were buying up the market share and coming in at a very low price point, um, you know, very slim margins because of their scale. So again, at this point, my grandparents had passed away um, and my mom and my aunt took over the business and they had to reinvent themselves again. Um, so they fell into the natural pet food business. And so over the course of my, um, my childhood, I was very much um, you know, living this reinvention constantly. And the idea that um, it was almost survival of the fittest at points. You know, I remember different times in my childhood where you know, my family was really my first team and my first um, look at business and a community. And the lens that I, that I have lived my life through has always been um, through that lens of community and business and never having them separated because my parents and, and the family business was such an integral part of our community. Um, you know, whether it was something as simple as them donating money to the local scholarship drive or them hosting events on our farm. Um, you know, it was, it was always an integral part. So that kind of set the tone for me in, in terms of looking at both business and society, um, in looking at public and private partnerships, um, and, and truly in terms of, um, as you know, you, you asked about the philosophy of life, like for me, it's always looking at what is the central theme in terms of community that can be pulled out of any business, that can be pulled out of any, um, any situation, I mean, our kitchen table was everyone's kitchen table. Um, it was a it was a comfort zone for both, you know, my parents, um, client, you know, customers, employees, community members, friends, family. Everybody gathered in our in our kitchen and in our living room, and it was just a you know our home is very much a sanctuary. And I saw the power of bringing together people at a very young age, and what that meant in terms of building shared experiences and the connection that people felt to those shared experiences. Um, understanding that when that happens, you, you see something and you want something bigger than yourself. The power for me and the, and the power in it that I saw and the real gold in it was this intergenerational exchange. That, 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 beautiful, you know, that beautiful magic that happens when you have a 60-year-old retired NASA engineer sitting next to a 25-year-old, you know, social media whiz kid sitting next to the 35 year old chef and like that just doesn't happen in normal everyday life um, and I think that's in terms of you know kind of the the future of our world um, especially you know being that information is becoming more democratized every single day um, that intergenerational and the, the cross-disciplinary exchange is going to be the most important Peace um, moving into the future because Starting Block um, is an organization that brings together young people, 20 to 30 years old, who are passionate about driving social change and innovation no matter where they go in their career. The idea is, you know, you bring in the, the engineer, you bring in um, the teacher, you bring together the, um, you know, the consultant and the social entrepreneur and put them in a room and, and that's where the greatest ideas come from. And, and understanding that no matter where they go, they're going to take that common thread with them. I think for me, in, in, in um, facilitating and curating um, our, our four day, five day leadership program, um, I, it was incredible to see how in bringing together these different sectors of, of individuals, um, how literally their minds would be changing day to day about what they wanted to do, where they wanted to go, and that was all this, that happened because of the conversations they were having with each other. Their, their own perspective was changed by their peers. Um, a, a very tangible example, uh, a friend of mine was working um, traditional eye banking um, and you know, had always kind of really been interested in more of the sustainability movement. 
um, and, but didn't, but it really enjoyed corporate world. Um, she didn't really, she didn't want to leave uh, corporate America. She actually was one of those kids that truly enjoyed it. Um, as crazy as that sounds, <laughs> um, so she was having these conversations, and what she ended up doing was um, going at like to the um, supply. There was within the company there had been kind of a, a, a very non-visible sustainability movement, and she ended up bringing together people from all the different departments and started a sustainability um, initiative within her company. Um, and it was a very, she didn't have to leave her job. I mean, she obviously put in extra time, but it was because of the conversations that were sparked during her time there, where she saw that she didn't have to live in separate worlds, where she didn't have to leave her corporate job and um, that she really loved and go off and, you know, be a, a you know, like a zealot advocate. Um, she could figure out a way to mesh her worlds, and she did. Um, and, you know, and ultimately it proved to be pretty, it had a huge impact within the company as well. So, it, you know, for her, it was a win-win all around. And that came from, um, again, like the perspective, the, the, the life-changing um, conversation she was having with people just of very different perspectives and backgrounds. Uh, there is a significant amount of risk um, and courage that it takes to, uh, to make change. If you are passionate about what you really believe in and what you want to do. I think the first step is finding the gatekeepers and making really solid alliances, um, building relationships with the right kinds of people. And who does that look like? Um, it's people who are decision makers and it's also people who are influencers. Um, and who are those people? I think they're at every single line of the, of the chain. You know, you want to hit someone at the top, um, at the C-suite level, at the at you know a very high decision maker at a VP level, a C-suite level, um, so that you can you know it's it's reach out and um, and be genuine. I think people are really drawn toward towards authenticity, um, and and people who are genuinely caring about um, both the organization or business that they're in and the future that whatever their initiative or or passion might hold and how that affects the long term of the organization in a very like real authentic like this is what I believe in and just start talking about what you believe in like people are drawn to that because it's just not very often that you hear people with conviction talking about what they really um, what they love what they believe in what they're passionate about and I think that energy is catalytic um, so once you find the right people at all different levels who can start being influencers, who can start making real decisions, and, and again, like I said, build alliances. Like find people who are who are already drawn to you that you don't take that much convincing, you know, and and start building those partnerships. Um, and and it's you know it's like the network effect, right? Like once you get that, then it just starts growing. Um, I think that's probably step one. I mean, there's obviously risk at every at every point along the way, but um, you know, I think it's about risk reward, right? Like, and if you're going, if you're really, I don't know. I, I think that if you don't put yourself out there, there's no opportunity or chance for real change. So if you're if you're not if you're not going to throw yourself in the fire a little bit, you know, what else are we living for? Um, people are drawn towards, I think, community and results. Um, they want to see outcomes and they want to see um, real pictures of what that looks like, whether it's numbers or stories or um, or like a physical, whether it's like an outcome would be like, if, if you want to build something, it would be like, all right, well, we're going to see the space at the end. I think you need to sell people on outcomes. Um, and and in, in making that happen, building a case for it by you know, you've built those alliances. Now build the story. Um, what are your What are your outcomes look like? And in selling that, I think it, it's um, you need to have someone who can uh, again, like, build the story and tell the story well. Um, but if you don't have an end game or at least some kind of, uh, you know, if you, if you're just building an alliance around an idea, that's great. But if the idea doesn't have purpose or higher you know, a higher purpose or outcome, what's the point? Um, so I think it's also, you know, getting those people at the top to see, you know, how is this connected to both an organizational and business 
perspective of growth or development or community building um, and building that story in, in all of in all aspects of, of that um, of that cell. One is um, is the intergenerational conversation happening in the workplace, meaning, you know, baby boomer generation over the next five to ten years are they're all gonna be retiring. You have this incredible wisdom, knowledge, and experience that is really like not really in a retirement mode or has has not been used to not working their whole life. I think that as a a set of individuals who will offer our entire society an incredible wealth of knowledge in to completely different ways than they have in the past is going to be huge. And I think you're going to see within specifically that generation um, this incredible kind of second life of, of individuals who start, whether it's volunteering or new, starting new businesses or doing part-time work, that you have this, this set of individuals who won't be ready to fully retire um, and they will be an incredible wealth of knowledge to you know, all, the, all the generations behind them. Um, and I also think that in terms of you know, the, right now you have this younger Gen Y um, generation who has grown up on the flatbed of social media, new media, democratization of information, you know, everything is at their fingertips. Um, so they also have this opportunity to leverage their own kind of knowledge base in partnership with generations above them. So I think that you know, number one for me is 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 that gener intergenerational conversation happening, and how is it happening? How are we connecting people around what they're passionate about and what they love um, around making the world better? Because I think the legacy um, conversation, especially within the baby boomer generation, is going to going to become bigger. Um, and I think that you have a, an incredible opportunity um, for new business and new organizational development. Um, so that's one. And then two, um, you can see it in the technologies that are popping up already. The new media and the new technology that I'm excited about are the programs and the companies out there that are aggregating everything in on the internet and aggregating everything in our lives. You have right now all these incredible um, technology, you know, specifically technology companies, um, but also like product and service companies around the country and around the world that are doing very niche things. And I think the the next kind of um, you know what I've seen as like a aha moment is seeing the companies that are taking it to the next level and aggregating. They're pulling all of that and making it easier to see through. You know, to see through the dust, to see through the the um, the dark clouds, because I, I think people are being inundated and they're getting a little overwhelmed. Um, so those are the two big things for me. I would say intergenerational conversation um, happening at every level um, and the opportunity there. And then secondly is uh, aggregated um, information and, and architecture architecting what that looks like. Um, and those two things for me, I, as I see it, are, are going to be huge over the next, over at least until, you know, for the next 20 to 30 years. What I try to do in my everyday life is touch one person. Um, and even if that's myself, like, I know that I've done something to change me. Um, and I think the idea that sometimes we think about change is overwhelming, um, meaning like, oh my god, the, you know, climate change is coming and the world's over, like, that's, that's overwhelming to people, you know? Um, but to be able to think about, you know, how am I living my life as a good person and living my values and living every day to make the world a little bit better? Um, that comes in so many different forms. And I think if more people were just asking themselves that question and thinking about the little things that they do and how it adds up aggregate with everyone else doing the same, it would be a pretty amazing shift in the world.